All right, so the Darby, Darby integration. So the main thing is our partitions are not gonna have tags now. So you have a bounded function on the closed interval A, B, and then you're always gonna pick the lowest point in each part of the partition or lowest value or as far as the function's value being the lowest um, for each sub interval. And then always pick the highest point for the function for each sub interval for that partition. And so formalizing this, you have for one is less than or equal to i, less than or equal to n, let m subscript i, so that's lowercase m, subscript i to be equal to the infimum of the function values, the infimum, uh, so nth f of x for the sub interval where x is in xi minus one to xi. And then capital MI is the supremum or sup f of x. So the sup or inf, these might not be values of the function. So that's something to keep in mind because the supremum or infimum does not have to be part of the actual set. So define the following. So we have this notation where it's capital L in parentheses F semicolon P. And this is basically the Riemann sum of the uh, lowercase m i times x i minus x i minus one from i equals one to n. So you're taking the summation of the nth values of the function from each sub interval. And then similarly, the capital U, uh, parentheses F semicolon P. So this is the summation Riemann sum involving where you're actually using the supremum values of the function from each sub interval. So you have a, you have a set of values of summations and you have two sets. So the L F of P, you get a set of these, these are called the lower sums. So this would be the set of lower sums. And then similarly for the use, it'd be set of upper sums. All right, and so for whatever the partition P that you're dealing with, um, now if you take all of the set of lower sums and then you find the supremum of that set, that is what capital L parentheses F is gonna represent. So that is the supremum is the su supremum of the set of lower sums. Or you could maybe write it concretely in mathematical terms, it's equal to soup of the L of F of P's. Um, and that's, again, that's dealing with your particular partition P, but the partition's an arbitrary partition. Similarly, um, you have U cap, capital U of F. This is actually gonna be the infimum of the set of upper sums. All right, so the idea is you have partition from each partition, for the, each sub interval of that partition, you pick the lowest points of the function um, and find the a lower bound to the lowest points. That's gonna be the nth for that sub interval. And then 
you sum up those uh, the nth of that subinterval times the length of that subinterval, summing 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 all those up for all of the sum subintervals gives you the lower sums, and then the other one would be the upper sums if you're picking the supremum or the soup of the function from each subinterval. And then you create, that gives you a set. Um, you can have different lower sums and different upper sums depending on how the partition is set up. And so for the set of all lower sums, capo L of F is gonna be the supremum of these lower sums. And then capital U of F is gonna be the infimum of the set of the upper sums. And so the definition of dark view integral um, is a functions uh, L F is equal to U F. So the infimum, the supremum of the lower sums is equal to the infimum of the upper sums. And you can define the notation of the definite integral of A to B of F, which is equal to capital L of F. And again, that's equal to capital U of F if the function is dark view integrable. All right, so this is just giving you the notation for everything. Uh, we will go in more uh, in a discussion of this stuff. But first we need some preliminaries. <clears throat> and so that's where this video is going to focus on is some pre preliminaries. And so we're going to focus on partitions and upper and lower sums as an uh, example. So if we consider the function f of x equals x and we focus our function on the closed interval two to six, let's say we consider the following partition P. So we pick the values for the partition to be 2, 3, 3.5, 5, and 6. And so that gives us the subintervals that you see. So these are subintervals based on those values that we picked for the partition. Now notice that the subintervals don't need to have the same length. It's just in calc class from calc one or calc two or whatever that you dealt with them having the same length. It's, it doesn't have to be the case. So focusing on the lower sums. So this is a graph, just a rough picture of the function. And from each subinterval for the lower sum, you basically will be picking the infimum of the value. So the, the lowest point from each subinterval and our function is increasing. And notice the lowest point is always going to be the leftmost point value that's chosen from each sub interval. And so this is our value for the first sub interval going from two to three. That gives you the height of that green rectangle. The height of that green rectangle is the function evaluated at two. That's the left point of the subinterval. Our function is f of x equals x. So f of 2 equals 2. All right, and then the pink rectangle, that's the subinterval going from 3 to 3.5. And then the leftmost point of that subinterval is 3. So the height of the rectangle is f of 3, which equals 3. All right, so it's an increasing function. It's continuous. Um, and since it's increasing, then the low points happen to be at the left most values of the each uh, subinterval. So increasing function. The lowest values happen at the left endpoints of each subinterval. Similarly, um, 
the highest points would be at the right end points. And so we take this partition, form these rectangles, the height of these rectangles, as far as the lower sum goes, is based on the left endpoints of each subinterval. And then so we find the area of each rectangle and add the areas together to give us an approximation of the area that's under the curve. And so we have the green rectangle plus the pink one plus the orange plus the blue one. And so these areas are the following. So the green rectangle has area two, pink one has 1.5, orange one has 5.25, and the blue one has area five. Summing those up gives you uh, an approximation for the lower, well, this is the lower sum based on that partition, and that lower sum is 13.75. All right, so that's the idea. And so I just, I worked it out first rectangle is base times height. So the first rectangle comes from interval two to three. So the length of that is three minus two, which equals one. And that gives you the base or the width of the rectangle. And the height is F of two, which is two. So base times height, one times two is two. All right, so if you want to check it, you can see that I have this work and that's where I get these areas. All right, so the lower sum for this partition is 13.75. Now, if you were to do the upper sum, again, you're using the right endpoints for each subinterval for this particular partition P, it's going to give you an upper sum of 18.25. All right, so it's the same kind of process, except now you're picking the right endpoints. And these are, this is the work to get you the different areas. So you have three for the first rectangle, second rectangle's area is 1.75, the third rectangle's area is 7.5, and the fourth rectangle's area is 6. So summing up these values, that gives you 18.25 for the upper sum. All right, so that's based on our partition where we have uh, that specific partition. Now, what happens if we used a different partition Q, but it, and it uses all the same partition points as P, but with one more additional point? What is that gonna do to our lower sums and upper sums? So I have P being like two less than three, less than 3.5, less than five and less than six. The collection of points for that are two, three, 3.5, five and six. Now let's say I pick an additional point and that additional point is four. All right, so Q has more points than P. It's all the same points as P, but with this additional point. And we're gonna see what are the, how does this affect the lower sums and upper sums. So our sub intervals are two to three, three to three point five, three point five to four, four to five, and five to six. And so doing the um, lower sums, these are the different areas for those rectangles. And then we sum up these areas and that gives us the lower sum based on this partition Q to be 14.25. Similarly, using the right endpoints for partition Q gives you the upper sum being 17.75. And then this is the values that gave me 17.75. So in summary, <clears throat> based on the partition P, we had lower sums 13.75, upper sums 18.25. Now, if we take that same partition P, but add an additional point, in this case, the additional point was the point 
or the x value being four, um, that partition, new partition Q gives us a lower sum of 14.25 and an upper sum of 17.75. And so we have that the lower sum of P is less than the lower sum of Q and less than the upper sum of Q, which is less than the upper sum of P. All right, so Q is called a refinement of partition P. So proposition, and we're actually going to end this video with proving this proposition. So P is a partition of the closed interval A, B, and Q is a refinement of P. So it's gonna have all the same partition points as P, but let's say it has one additional more point, one additional point. Then it's true that the lower sum of P is less than or equal to the lower sum of Q, less than or equal to the upper sum of Q, which is less than or and equal to the upper sum with P. So from this proposition, an inductive argument can be made to give the following corollary. So basically it's the same thing. It's just now that instead of one additional point, Q has finitely many more points. And specifically it's gonna be the magnitude. So the uh, right, the cardinality. So like this is cardinality of P. This is cardinality of Q. And so this, so Q, and then it's supposed to be take away P. So that's the cardinality of Q without or subtract P. So that particular cardinality gives you the finite number of additional points that are in Q that are not in P. And so it's just the same thing as our proposition with the inequalities. So now, um, and you, basically using an inductive argument, you can get that corollary. So we're going to focus our attention on this proposition and prove it. So before proving it, I'll do a sketch and just write down, have the ideas written down that we're going to use. So let P be a partition. Um, basically, you have A which starts out at A, which is X naught, all the way to X in, which is, which is our B. Let Q be the same, all the same points, except that we reach a state where this, there's an additional point Y. And that happens between X sub K, uh, X sub K minus one and X sub K. So it's the same as P, just has this one additional point Y. And so I just kind of drew a picture. Let's say this is our function and we're focusing our attention on this sub interval from X sub K minus one to X K. And now we have this additional point Y that's in that sub interval. So you see that I put an orange dashed is the uh, infimum of the function on that subinterval, and then another orange dash that's going to be the supremum of the function in that subinterval. Focusing it and splitting it up in the two subintervals, where you have x k minus one to y. This is what it would look like, and then the other one y to x k. So you see the. Uh, where it's split up from x k minus one to y, you have the infimum, this being the the horizontal value or the dash value that the infimum of that, and then yellow for the infimum for the uh, so the infimum of the subinterval from y to x k. Now, if you notice that the green infimum is lower than the the yellow infimum, and so overall, though that is. Uh, our lowest one, the green one, is essentially the same as uh, 
this orange and fume based on this picture. So this is the same as that. All right, so I wrote down that we have in colors, try to color coordinate it, that the infimum of the sub interval xk minus one to xk in this particular case is equal to the same infimum of the sub interval from xk minus one to y. And that's less than or equal to the infimum from the sub interval y to xk. All right, so that's just a picture representing what we have for that. And essentially the main point is that the infimum of the entire sub interval xk minus one to xk is less than or equal to the infimums from the two other sub intervals that are subsets of the overall sub interval, if that makes sense. Now here's another picture, but this time focusing our attention, I just drew a different graph and focus our attention on the supremum. So splitting it up to the two sub intervals where the first sub interval xk minus one to y, you have that green dash is the supremum. And then the second sub interval from y to xk, you have the yellow value that's the supremum. And you'll see that the green value is bigger than the yellow value. So this, and notice that in this particular case, the supremum of that sub interval xk minus one to y is the same as the supremum of the overall sub interval xk minus one to xk. So the point is that the supremum of the function on the entire subinterval xk minus one to xk is greater than or equal to the supremum of the function from the two subintervals. All right, that's the main gist of it. And so note that we have uh, the subintervals being subsets of the main subinterval xk minus one to xk. So subinterval xk minus one to y is a subset of xk minus one to xk. And y comma k, that subinterval is a subset of the sub of the overall subinterval xk minus one to xk. Okay, which tells us that the function evaluated on these subintervals is going to give you similar things it's just uh, that set of values is a subset of the overall subset of values of the function evaluated on the entire subinterval xk minus 1 to xk so there's an exercise that in jay cummings textbook set exercise 8.2 so from and he defines the Riemann integral as this, basically as this integral, the Darby, um, which we'll later on see their equivalent. But the exercise says that if you have a, a is a subset of B and their A and B are both non-empty, then the supremum of A is less than or equal to the supremum of B and the infimum of B is less than or equal to the infimum of A. So because of that exercise, we can state that the soup on from each sub intervals are, are less than the equal to the soup from the overall sub interval xk minus one to xk. And, and based on this, the infimum of the biggest, the bigger sub interval, the overall one xk minus one to xk is going to be less than or equal to the infimums from the different two sub intervals that we're splitting up our whole interval x sub interval xk minus one xk and the two sub intervals. And so the infimum of the whole one is less than or equal to this infimum of the other other smaller ones. Whereas the supremum of the smaller ones are each less than or equal to the supremum of the overall bigger set, bigger interval, xk minus one to xk. So that's based on using our knowledge from this exercise 8.2 that we can make that um, justification. And so I went ahead and actually proved this exercise, which if you go on YouTube and you see my problems for this real analysis series, it is one of the problems that I actually work out just maybe using different letters. So here's the proof. So we're going to show that um, 
so WTS is wish to show. So we wish to show that the sup of A is less than or equal to the sup of B and the infimum of B is less than or equal to the infimum of A, where A is a subset of B and A and B are not empty. Of course, this is assuming that our functions are bounded, which is necessary because they are bounded because the function needs to be bounded for it to be, have that integral, Darby integral. So here's the case one showing that the supremum of A is less than or equal to the supremum of B. So each sub, each set is non-empty. So A not is non-empty. So that means the supremum of A exists and then B is non-empty. So the supremum of B exists. So we know for all elements A and cap and the set A, these elements are less than or equal to the supremum of that set. And for it to be a supremum, we know that if you use any upper bound for the set A, so I underlined any, then the sup of A is less than or equal to U, where U is any upper bound. So also sup of B is an upper bound of A because sup of B is an upper bound of B and A is a subset of B. So therefore the sup of A is less than or equal to the sup of B. So we're essentially saying that the sup of B is taking the role of U based on the definition of supremum in that case. The infimum is pretty similar. Um, so we know for all A and A, the infimum of A is less than or equal to A, or for all elements of A that are in A. And so if W is any lower bound for A, then W is less than or equal to the inf of A. Also, inf of B is a lower bound for A because inf of B is a lower bound for B and A is a subset of B. So therefore, the inf of B is less than or equal to the inf of A. Whereas this case, our inf of B is sort of taking the role of this any arbitrary lower bound for A. All right, so we will use this knowledge or this exercise 8.2 for the justifications and the proof for stating that the supremum of the low of the uh, two smaller subsets sub intervals are less than or equal to the supremum of the overall bigger sub interval and then also the inf the infimum is going to be less than or equal to the infimum of the smaller two sub intervals all right so that's that's where why we why to show that because it's going to that uh, knowledge is being applied here okay so i think we have pretty much the main points and then the last thing is that for any set a where a is non-empty and bounded the infimum of the set is always less than or equal to the supremum of the set and so the infimum of the f of x values is less than the supremum of the f of x values which tells you that the x of i minus xi minus one of the infimum of the f of x is less than or equal to xi min minus xi minus one times the supremum of f of x. Okay, so these those are all the main points. Now I am going to actually do, do the proof now. So the actual proof, so we're trying to prove that the lower sum of partition P is less than or equal to the lower sum with partition Q, which that itself is lower, less than or equal to the upper sum with partition Q, which is less than or equal to the upper sum with partition P, where Q is a refinement of P, where Q is a refinement of P, but has one more additional point. All right, so that's what we're trying to do. All right, so proof, uh, let's let P be the partition. Let's say it starts out at A, which is equal to X naught, less than X one, less than dot, 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 and then less than X K minus one, less than X K dot, 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 all the way up to X N, which is our B. So let Q be the refinement of P. So it's all pretty much all the same.
except now we're gonna put an additional point that's between xk minus one and xk. And that additional point is gonna be called y. Okay, so we have we established this. Uh, we wish to show that the lower sum of p less than or equal to the lower sum of q less than or equal to the upper sum of q, which is less than or equal to the upper sum of p. All right, so clearly. The lower sum of q is less than or equal to the upper sum of, of q because for any set we know that the infimum is less than or equal to the supremum so we could say so because the inf of our function f of x uh, for x is in any sub interval i'm just saying it's say it's in i minus one to x to i that's going to be less than or equal to the supremum from each sub interval And so you just, uh, that's going to be true if and only if we have xi minus, or xi minus xi minus 1 times our function f of x, less than or equal to the same thing, um, but it's uh, soup. So then summation, all of these x uh, sub of the type of this form, that'll give us the summation from i equals one to n of xi. So in this case, inf of fx times xi minus xi minus one. And again, these infimums are from each subinterval, and we're dealing with Q as our partition. So that's less than or equal to from i equals one to n of the soup from each subintervals with partition Q of xi minus xi minus one. Well, that's the same. This is what our lower sum is with Q. All right, so we have that established. So now we just got to suffices, suffices to show that the lower sum of P is less than or equal to the lower sum with Q. And the upper sum with Q is less than or equal to the upper sum with P. All right, so I put STS for suffices to show. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to do the upper sum case first. So I'll call it the upper sum case. So we're trying to show that the upper sum with partition Q is less than or equal to the upper sum partition P. 
So based on our exercise that I did to that exercise 8.2, We know that the soup of f of x, where x is in the entire subinterval, let's say xk minus 1 to xk, is going to be greater than or equal to, and I'll use different colors, let's say the soup of the function from x into x sub interval xk minus 1 to y. And the same is true for the other. So and I'll use a different color for this other one. So So this time it's going from y to xk. All right, so you have the you have the overall subinterval xk minus one to xk split up into the two subintervals xk minus one to y, and then y to xk. But the overall supremum from the bigger subinterval is greater than or equal to the supremum from the two smaller subintervals, and that's based because those two subintervals you know we know the function evaluated at that and all that those sets are smaller than or equal to the other set. So that exercise 8.2 tells us that the supremum of the bigger set is greater than or equal to the supremum of the subset or smaller set. All right, so we're gonna do a clever way of adding zero. So, um, Note that first that we know that the sum of all the f of x values, soup of f of x are all the same as for both partitions except for the two sub intervals now. And so we just need to focus our attention on the sub intervals and get our way, our answer. So if you do xk minus xk minus 1 times the supremum of f of x, where we're focusing on the supremum from that subinterval xk minus 1 to xk, and we can add 0 in the form of y, so we can add 0. So it would be like xk minus y. And then plus y minus xk minus 1. All right, so then uh, that we can sort of break this up. So this is like, and I'll do the y part first. So this is the same as just breaking it up. So y uh, minus xk minus 1 times the supremum of the function from xk minus 1 to xk, and then plus xk minus y. Times the supremum of our function from the overall subinterval xk minus 1 to xk. All right, so all of that 
is going to be so so we know this this soup of the overall sub interval is greater than or equal to both of these soups from the two smaller sub intervals so since based on the color coordination this is going to be greater than or equal to the soup from the sub interval from xk minus 1 to y so we're going to have so it's y minus xk minus 1 times the soup of the sub interval for x goes from xk minus 1 to y and then plus xk minus y times the soup from the other smaller subinterval, which that color I used was purple or pink. Oh, and that goes from y to xk. Okay, and so what I've essentially established was that when we have xk minus xk minus one times uh, the soup of the function on that entire subinterval, that is greater than or equal to the um, and I guess I'll, I'll still use it in colors. That is greater than or equal to y minus xk minus 1 times the soup with the yellow one, that subinterval. Then plus. xk minus y times the purple soup, which came from the subinterval y to xk. And so this overall soup from the subinterval xk minus 1 to xk is part of our partition P whereas these other soups are part of partition Q. And these are going to basically will tell us that we have that the upper sum of P, because for all the other values of the sub, all other sub intervals that are the same, except for this particular slot or area where we get breaking up the sub interval xk minus 1 to xk into two sub intervals. All other subintervals, the supremum of for those are the same as the supremum for the ones from Q. So we're just focusing our attention on this one particular subinterval that got split up into two because of our one additional point y, because that was what Q was a refinement. And so this will tell us that the upper sum with P is greater than or equal to the upper sum of Q. All right, so that takes care of that case. So essentially, I used exercise 8.2 to justify that the supremum of the overall subinterval xk minus 1 to xk, that supremum is greater than or equal to the supremums from the two subintervals that we split it up into xk minus 1 to y and y to xk. And so if that's true, then you did a, I did a clever way of adding 0 so that we can involve our additional point y. And so, and, and then that will give us that this length or the width of the overall subinterval xk minus 1 to xk, that length times its soup is greater than or equal to the lengths of the two subintervals times the soup of those two subintervals.
and that that whole portion on on the right hand side that comes from partition Q whereas the one on the left side that is from our partition P all right so that's true then the upper sum with partition P is greater than or equal to the upper sum of partition Q. All right, because for all the other sub intervals, it's going to be the same for P and Q. So we only needed to focus our attention on this particular sub interval where we, we broke it up into two sub two others, two sub intervals of that sub interval based because we used our additional point Y for that. All right, so the other one is pretty much done the same. So the lower sum case. That was the upper sum case, now the lower sum case. We we're gonna essentially do the same, same argument. It's just now by exercise 8.2. Uh, we know that the infimum of the overall subinterval, so the infimum of the function from x from xk minus 1 to xk, um, what do we know for that? So we know the inf of the overall subinterval xk minus 1 to xk is going to be less than or equal to the nth from, from the two subintervals that we broke it up into. So by colors, uh, so that I'm consistent, I used color yellow for the subinterval xk minus 1 to y. So this would be less than or equal to the nth of the function on that subinterval xk minus 1 to y. And similar, and then it's also going to be less than or equal to the other inf. So that's other color I used. Uh, I think it was purple. Let's see. Yeah, purple. That was from y to xk. All right, so we can do the same thing of adding zero. So do the same as earlier with adding zero in the form of y. You yield that the infimum, so xi or xk minus xk minus one uh, times the nth of the function on that entire subinterval xk minus one to xk. So we know that's less than or equal to the imps from each other two subintervals. So this will be less than or equal to our, so the first subinterval sub that we broke it up into is xk minus one to y. So the length of that is y minus xk minus one. So it's less than or equal to y minus xk minus one. And that is the infimum was that color. And then plus, this time it'll be xk, the length of the second subinterval from y to xk. So that length is xk minus y. And then times the uh, infimum, that subinterval. Oh, so from y to xk. Uh, 
I need to change this. So it's xk minus one to y. All right, so what does that tell us? So since that's the case, we know the right-hand side is part of the lower sum with partition Q. And then the left-hand side is part of partition P. So this, we state that the lower sum of P is less than or equal to the lower sum with Q. All right, so we have this established. And we have this established. And we have this established. So combining all of that, we have the lower sum of P less than or equal to lower sum with Q. And that's less than or equal to the upper sum of Q, which is less than or equal to the upper sum with partition P. All right, and this was using one additional point for our refinement Q of P. And that point that we used was called Y. All right, so that's where I'll stop it for this video. I think that was enough to get I just want to get our feet wet with partitions as far as refinement goes and how it affects the lower sum and upper sums. Now we'll go more into actual Darbu, Darbu integration in the next video.